Hello dear aspirants. My name is Aditya Amlan Panda, your mentor and I am here to discuss with you the question on definite integral which we had posted in the community. So this is the question and you would have ample methods of solving it, directly expanding it or using some properties of definite integral. But is this question something different? than what we have done before. Have you ever used graphs for calculating definite integrals? So before going into those things, chalo aapke saath koi normal baat discuss ki jai. The most important application of definite integration is that it is used to find the area under the curve. Consider this curve that is y is equal to fx. This area can never be calculated if you are not using integration. You can for sure use horizontal bars, vertical bars, but that will never provide you that accurate and information as integration would do. So all those would be summing up to integration itself. So let's use this similar graphical method to solve this question. So let's give you, let me give you a glimpse of how to start with it. What do you understand from this graph? First thing is that this wavy line is the function y is equal to fx. Now this area, that is the area enclosed by the wavy line and the x-axis is the area enclosed by the function and the x-axis and can be calculated by the integration of f of x dx bounded by the limits b and a the upper limit b and lower limit a. Now think it the other direction. What if we calculate the integration of x dy or to simplify f inverse of x dx. Agar hum f of x dx ko calculate nahi karke, hum isko f inverse of x dx calculate karte hain, to wo barabar hoga integration of x dy. To normal cheese jo is graph mein dikhai de rahi hai, wo hai ye f of a is equal to c, f of b is equivalent to d. Now, if we are calculating f inverse of x dx bounded by the limits c and d, then we can calculate the area between the graph and the y-axis, that is this area. Now just consider one thing that these points O, Q, P, they're just points, they're not values. But A, B, C, D, they are values. They are values, but I will use points in the uh, way. You can take them as capital A, capital B, but that would again make it too much, too much of complicacy there. So I will take them as values. I will take them as points also. But O, Q, P, we will use points in the way, not values in the way. So now, if we are calculating the sum, the sum of f of x dx from b to a and f inverse of x dx from d to c, then what? Now you will see one thing, that this area plus this area, when this both both of them are added there is a unique kind of shape this shape is nothing but the shape of the larger rectangle from where the smaller rectangle has been removed the larger rectangle that is odpb and the smaller rectangle is ocqa so odpb is a larger rectangle from where the smaller rectangle ocqa has been removed so how can we find the sum of these two is through the area of the rectangle ODPB minus the area of the rectangle OCQA. Proceeding further, OD into OB minus OC into OA. That is because the area of rectangle can be calculated by the product of the lengths of two adjacent sides. We can calculate the area of the rectangle length into breadth, which is 
उसकी लेंथ ऑफ टू एडजस्टेंट साइड उनकी प्रोडक्ट होती है यहाँ पे वो है ओडी इन टू ओ बी और इस छोटी वाली रेक्टेंगल का एरिया है ओ सी इन टू ओ ए बड़ी वाली का एरिया है ओडी इंटू ओ बी और छोटी वाली रेक्टेंगल का एरिया है ओ सी इंटू ओ ए नाउ एस आई सेट बिफोर दैट आई वुड बी टेकिंग ए बी सी डी एज वैल्यूज एज वेल एज पॉइंट इधर तो आपने देखा कि मैंने उसको पॉइंट की तरह गिना है पर यहाँ पे उसको वैल्यू की तरह गिनते हैं चलो आप इस ओ को जीरो ले लो और ये जो बी है बी into this length is d so this length is b and this length is d similarly this length is a this length is c so bd into ac bd is the area of the larger rectangle that is b into d and ac is the area of the smaller rectangle that is a into c but what can we know this from here p is the upper limit of the first function and d is the upper limit of the second function similarly a is the lower limit of the first function and c is the upper limit sorry lower limit of the second function so can you notice one important thing that it is just the difference between the product of the upper limit and lower limit that is the product of upper limits minus the product of lower limits now will this really simplify the equations yeah this will definitely you don't need to expand it when you see this type of question where that is the sum of f of x and f inverse of x jab in dono ka sum diya gaya ho fx aur f inverse of x aur unka ek integral calculate karne ke liye aapse kaha gaya ho to us case mein jaise yahan pe hai b se a aur t se c to aap simply na upper limits ko multiply kar dijiye aur lower limits ko multiply kar dijiye alag alag se jaise yahan pe a aur c ko aap multiply karenge b aur d ko aap multiply karenge aur unko separate kar denge aur fir upper limit ka jo product aapka niklega b aur b t उससे लोअर लिमिट ए सी के प्रोडक्ट को सब कर देंगे और वो आपका आंसर दे देगा दैट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द लार्जर रेक्टेंगल एंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द एरिया ऑफ दिस स्मॉल रेक्टेंगल नाउ दिस वाज़ द क्वेश्चन राइट क्या आपको ऐसा दिख रहा है कि ये जो फंक्शन है उसका इनवर्स ये फंक्शन है can you see that by doing some little bit of changes here we can make it the inverse of this if you are not able to see agar aap dekh nahi pa rahe then let's go to the general ways that we usually follow jab hum kisi bhi aise values ko ek bracket wagera mein kuch dekhte hain to hum usko kya karte hain hum simply is jo bracket ko isko ek single variable maan lete hain isko variable maanne ke liye hum karna kya hai substitution so let's substitute as x minus t x minus 2 as t taking x minus 2 as t you can get this kind of values aapne dekha maine limits mein kuch kuch badlav kiye hain that is x minus 2 is equal to t when x is equal to 4 x minus 2 becomes 4 minus 2 that is equal to 2 when x is equal to 5 by 2 then x minus 2 becomes 5 by 2 minus 2 giving 1 by 2 and here it is t dt so you are getting because x minus 2 as uh, t d of x minus 2 is equal to dx and d of t is equal to dt so dx is equal to t now one more thing integrals do not depend on variable right so this can be t this can be x this can be y this can be z this can be a this can be anything this can is the property of definite integration right if it is a definite integration then never ever does the integral depend on the variable So what I did is that I simply changed this this t into x. Now you can see it is sine inverse of log x to the base two dx within the limits of two and one by two. Now you can easily see that two to the power sine x is the inverse of sine inverse of log x to the base two. ये दोनों functions एक दूसरे का वो inverse नजर आएंगे. The both are inverse of each other. आप इसको कैलकुलेट करके भी देख सकते हैं जैसे कि y इज इक्वल टू 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 दी पर साइन एक्स और आपको कैलकुलेट करना चाहिए भी बिकॉज इस तरह के रिस्क एग्जाम में मत लीजिएगा ड्यू कैलकुलेट इट बिफोर कंक्लूडिंग दैट बोथ ऑफ देम आर इनवर्स ऑफ ईच अदर सो हियर इट इज लाइक y इज इक्वल टू 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 दी पर साइन एक्स नाउ टेकिंग लॉग आई दर साइड्स टू दी बेस टू हियर यू वी एंडिंग अप विद साइन एक्स हियर इट वुड बी लॉग वाई टू दी बेस टू नाउ टेकिंग साइन इनवर्स आई दर साइड्स sin inverse of sin x is x and here it is sin inverse of log y to the base 
Now, since x is equal to sine inverse of log 2, log y to the base 2, f inverse of x equals sine inverse log x to the base 2. Now, simply apply the conclusion we had found in the previous slide. That is the product of the upper limits sub minus the products of the lower limit. Simply subtract the products of lower limit from the products of upper limit. A products of upper limit is 2 into pi by 2 and product of lower limits is half into minus pi by 2. Subtracting them, here it is pi and here it is minus of pi by 4. So pi minus minus of pi by 4 gives you the result 5 pi by 4. So finally, this is your answer that is 5 pi by 4. And as you saw, we didn't have to do much experiments with the question. So if you will take the other method that is expanding it or using some definite integration properties, no doubt you will end up getting the same answer. But don't you think you'd be wasting a whole lot of time? Don't you think that would make your work immensely tough? Like uh, consider here, how many substitutions you have to put here? How many substitutions? So before solving any question in mathematics, do choose your approach. आप अपना approach सही तरीके से select कीजिए, उसके बाद आप questions से आगे बढ़िए। अगर आप questions से आगे बढ़ जाते हैं और आप कोई भी normal method को लेके, अगर आप सोचते हैं कि आपका answer सही आएगा, तो वो आपकी गलत फैमिली। मैं ये बात एक बार clear कर देना चाहूँगा। Always the approach is more important than the result or than the calculation. So do work upon your approach. Do work upon your thinking skills like how I can move forward in the question so you'll get the PDF in the description and do post your queries if you have any on this particular question all your queries are earnestly welcomed so thank you